Okay, step three. Step three is made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. So that was a part of then step two, starting to explore a little bit of, you know, what is your concept of God and, um, or of a higher power. And that uh, in this one, you're being asked to take another step in that direction to uh, be willing to turn your life over to the care of God. So if you, again, once again, if you're the highest power in your life, then you're your own God and there's nothing that you can do to turn that over and therefore you can't receive help from anybody other than yourself. So, but if you're willing to start to have an understanding that there are powers greater than yourself and um, whatever you decide to call them, whatever your concept of God is, that uh, you know, if you're willing to turn your, your life and your will, so you, you decide in your free will, I decided in my free will that I would use my free will to do what I believe is God's will. And um, I believe that, again, God being the energy of life, the creator of all, that um, the, the will of that was not for me to um, do harm to myself, to allow others to do harm to me, or to live a life without good values to where I was uh, harming other people and taking advantage of other people for my own benefit. So I think that there are certain values that are implied and if you look at pretty much all the different religions, they pretty much have the same values that they tell you to live by. You know, you shouldn't be stealing and killing people and uh, assaulting people, sexually assaulting people. You know, there's a lot of things that you should not be doing and that we pretty much universally understand that there are bad things that you could do and it would show that you have bad values and that there are good things that you could be doing which are the opposite of those bad things and that those things would show that you have good values and you're living a good quality of life. The people around you will um, appreciate you and care for you uh, more and you'll have more self-esteem and self-respect if you you know, live according to certain values that are good for you of being honest, respectful, responsible, safe with yourself and safe with others. Um, so, that's the third step. And so, for me, a part of that is that how do we make decisions? It says to make a decision. Well, we make decisions based on our behavior. Sometimes we just impulsively behave and we don't really think it through. And so, those are usually tied to feelings. I have a feeling, I'm angry and I just reacted by getting in somebody's face and yelling at them and hitting them. So that might be my feelings of being angry or maybe I love somebody and I didn't really think it through and I'm going to treat them with a lot of kindness and respect and, and be good to them and do something that would be helpful to them because I care about them, I love them. So that might be feelings motivated behaviors then there's thought motivated behaviors which you know again you're going to probably have both your your decisions are going to be based partially on your feelings partially on your thoughts in the case of having values that if i have a value that says uh, i'm not going to give myself permission to do things that are unsafe dishonest disrespectful um, and irresponsible so those are values and those are thought processes and so I have to stop and ask myself, especially at first, I have to ask myself, you know, does this fit the values and if it doesn't, I'm not going to do that behavior, I'm going to stop and think of what else I could be doing that does fit my values. So I could be angry at someone and want to yell in their face and want to hit them, but and then I ask myself, is that really safe? No. Is that going to be really respectful? No. So well, I, I can't do that. What could I do? Um, well, I could talk with the person and let them know that I don't like the way that they're treating me and that um, I'm not going to be able to be around them if they're going to act that way. So um, they can either work with me on problem solving that or I'm going to move along and not have them in my life anymore. So um, that would be a, uh, another way of using my values and my thoughts to change my behavior into something that um, fits the values that I want to live by and the person that I want to be. So why would somebody do those other negative things or have those negative values? Well, it's survival instincts. When we're born, we you know, are babies and we cry and we um, 
just expect other people to take care of us. Why? Because that's how we survive. If we don't let people know that we need to be fed and we need our diapers changed, we're going to not be able to survive or we're going to get sick from not being cared for. We need to be held and cuddled at times in order for us to feel nurtured and loved. And so when we're not getting our needs met, we cry. We don't really think about, you know, is this what's best for the other person? Now, did mom and dad get plenty of sleep and that um, they would be fine of getting up at two in the morning? No, we don't think about that. We just go, you know, I'm awake and my diaper is wet or I'm hungry. So I'm going to cry until somebody comes and takes care of me. That's a survival instinct. As we get older, we need to shift to not just going based on my feelings and my survival instincts, but having some thoughtfulness and some values around, you know, what's the considerate thing to do? How do I fit within my family? Everybody sleeps at night. I can't get up at night and decide that I'm going to watch TV and make food and just kind of have my own little party going on that I need to fit in with the rest of the family and allow people to sleep when they need to sleep. I need to eat when everybody else is eating. I need to start doing things to take care of myself instead of always expecting other people to do everything for me that I could do for myself. So that's a part of maturing. And so um, our survival instincts are just take care of me, don't worry about anybody else. Our values that develop over time are the ones that allow us to start considering other people and fitting in to be a constructive member of our family and then our community. Um, so in doing so with our survival instincts, there once again a saying in AA is let go and let God, that uh, sometimes we have to um, turn our will over to the care of God and do what we believe that God wants us to do. And it might not be what we would want to do if we were making a selfish decision based on our survival instincts that I'm the most important one and everything should revolve around me. Um, but that it's like, well, that's, that's not necessarily the, the right way of doing things. And so I'm going to let go of that and do what I believe is God's will, which is that what can I do to take care of myself without having to become uh, a burden on other people for things that I could do for myself? And what can I do to help other people? Because maybe there's someone else who needs help and I want to eventually have kids of my own and be able to do the things I need to do to take care of them. So I need to practice that in order to become an actual adult. And then once again, in the, you know, came to believe in a higher power, have an understanding of God, that for me, what that turned into is a uh, little mantra that I say for myself sometimes is that the energy of life is in me and I am in the energy of life. So uh, my body is self-sustaining. If you took the energy of life out of my body and I could no longer produce the energy of life to sustain my life, I would die. This body would not be alive and talking to you. It would be a corpse. And so the fact that I can produce the energy of life is a part of like me being made in God's image, that if God is the energy of life, or that's at least a part of what God is, then um, I am able to produce that, and that sustains my life. But I am certainly not God's equal, because look at all the other life that is here on earth with all the animals and people and plants and the energy of life that uh, is the intelligent designs that makes the earth habitable by life that uh, that's all much, much greater than me, and I benefit from that. But when I produce the energy of life within my own body, then it's not just I produce barely enough to keep me going, and I can't afford to put any of it out there. But the more I put out, the better my life is. And so when I am going out there and I'm interacting with people, I'm talking with people, that I'm putting the energy of life out. Now I can choose to do that in a selfish way or I can choose to do that in a positive, loving and caring way that contributes to the lives of other people around me. Um, that's my choice, which way I'm going to do it. I have free will, but the energy of life is all around me. There's people around me, there's other animals around me, there's plants out there in the world around me. My energy is affecting everything else that's living, all life around me, the energy of life that they have, is also being transmitted out. And so what I look for when I'm interacting with a person is, 
I'm putting out positive and loving and caring energy towards you, and I hope that you're putting that out towards me because we have energy that is flowing between us like this. So sometimes, uh, again, that person's in a bad space and they're angry and they may project that towards me and I can uh, accept that and that's the energy that's coming my way, but it's just energy so I don't have to take it and put, give it back out the same way I got it. I can take that energy in and put it back out in a loving and caring way and watch that person turn around the way that they're behaving. So, um, again, that's, that's a part of this.